This van has what's uh, known as disc brakes. As you can see, this right here, this is a caliper. And this part here, this whole section here, attached to the axle, this rotates, your tire goes on here, and this rotor, this part right here, this is a metal disc. Inside of this caliper are brake pads that pinch down onto this disc and cause the wheel to slow and that friction stops the wheel from moving as quickly, which actually will stop your entire vehicle. Anyway, as you can see, on this brake rotor, this really rusty portion here, it looks really, really nasty. This part is not contacting this brake pad in here that this caliper is squeezing together. There's one on both sides. Um, and you can see inside there too that we're not getting an even wear pattern on this brake rotor. So my first thought is that uh, these uh, brake pads are not gripping solidly and the vehicle is not braking effectively. You can actually hear. When I drove this van home after purchasing it, I could hear from the back kind of a like a grinding sound um, that was definitely coming from the rear of the vehicle. And that grinding sound would only happen when I was applying the brake, when I was pushing the brake pedal. So I knew it was something brake related. I'll actually walk up to the front real quick and you can see a brake rotor that is working pretty decently. I know this still looks nasty. Um, this brake, uh, this, this van had sat for about a year and a half before I bought it and rust starts to form on this freshly ground down metal surface. But driving a car, driving and using your brakes, um, these pads will clean off surface rust and there you can see a glare. You can see it's still pretty shiny. Um, and those pads will clean off any surface rust that has formed from a vehicle sitting. Um, that's why if you, if you drive a vehicle after maybe it sits for three months, um, you know, you go on a trip, you don't use it for work, you're doing something for some reason you're not using your car, um, and you notice that when you first start driving it and pushing the brake, you'll hear kind of a grinding or a squeaking sound, but that sound should go away pretty quickly into your first trip in this vehicle that has been sitting for a while. This rotor over here still looks very nice as well. And we'll go and since I'm doing this, we'll check out the other rear pad uh, and brake rotor. This one is worse. You see how much shiny there is? Just, uh, that's about an inch. This, this portion right here, my thumb is on, that is not good. This is not um, braking effectively. So I'm going to be replacing both uh, back brakes on this Chevy Astro van. Uh, this For this job, we are going to be removing this large bolt here and this one. These two bolts will allow this entire caliper, when they're removed, to slide off. This, this brake line here will uh, be attached still, so we, we don't want to let it, you know, drop down to the ground. But for this job, we're going to need, um, these are some metric sockets. Uh, you could also use crescent wrench or some other kind of wrench, um, but I find these to be the best thing for the job. And you'll also need uh, a ratchet or a little breaker bar like this. Um, I'm going to be using a uh, large wrench here so I can get some extra leverage on this. I don't actually have a uh, breaker bar large enough to remove um, these. They're, they're pretty stuck on there. Um, so uh, let's get to work. I already found out that these take an 18 millimeter socket. Notice that if you put on a 17 millimeter, well, it won't go on. And if you were to use one too large, like say this 19 millimeter, it moves a lot. And you don't want that. You'll actually end up hurting um, the uh, edges of that bolt. Righty tighty lefty loosey. Yeah, so with this little tool here, I'm not getting enough leverage to pop this loose. I need more leverage. I'm going to use a larger tool. I found this. Uh, well, actually, my dad did. It is a, uh, an 18 millimeter combination socket on one end and crescent wrench on the other. Uh, it's not the longest thing in the world, but it, it's going to uh, allow us to get a good bite on this. And then I'm going to use a chunk of pipe on this end 
as a sort of cheater bar to give me even more leverage, make this thing longer. Here we go. So this will go up in here. And actually, let me, let me show you what I'm working with. You can see what's going on exactly. So as you can see, that bolt I'm trying to get to right here, there's not a lot of uh, depth before you hit this uh, leaf spring mount here, whatever, whatever that is, it, it, it's attached to the leaf spring. Um, and so I can't get a, a long tool um, uh, up in there. Um, the angle through which I'll be swinging this tool, you know, it'll, it'll hit here and it'll hit here. So I don't have a lot to work with, but we're gonna put this up there and I'm gonna put a cheater bar here to get more leverage. This pipe will go on to the end of my wrench And we're going to try to push on this and break it loose. It broke free. It came loose. So, as you saw before, I don't have a large angle to swing through. So I have to remove my, my socket and crescent wrench combination and reattach it and do this again. And you'll, you'll watch it move this time. It's going to move further. There. We got it. We did it. It was a hassle, but when you're doing things at home and you don't have a full professional mechanics set of tools, this hassle is a lot of times what you have to go through. The bottom one, ugh, the bottom one's still really tough on there. But I'm going to go ahead and switch to a ratcheting uh, wrench so that I can swing it down, ratchet back up, and kind of do that motion. You'll see here in a minute how much easier that's going to be. And this bottom one, I don't know, I'm going to have to use a something with more leverage on that, but this top one should, yeah. So it allows me to turn, and this ratcheting wrench is really nice, one of my favorite tools here. It doesn't uh, force me to remove a crescent wrench, reposition, it's a lot quicker. Okay, I've taken out this bottom caliper bolt, it went right there, and uh, you can actually see that they had, uh, there's a train across the river, they had some kind of thread locker on here. Uh, the bolt doesn't look too nasty or rusty. Um, it is uh, not, not too bad looking, really, but there's some kind of yellow thread locker, it would appear, on here, uh, which is why this was so difficult to take off. We are just about ready to take this uh, caliper off, and then the rotor here is going to come off as well. Um, what you're looking at right here is a factory little lock that was put on this vehicle when it was being built on the assembly line. That also lets us know that these rotors are the original rotors, and this van has 97,000 miles, so the rotors are absolutely in need of replacement. So we're going to take these little locks off with a pair of uh, diagonal cutting pliers, and then I'm going to take the caliper off. All right, I'm going to tap on the top and bottom of the... Uh caliper. There we go. Now in the future, we'll do a video on drum brakes. That's a different type of brake. But for right now, we've gotten this just about taken apart. I'll go get some string to tie that up. Alright, we're going to go ahead and tie this caliper up maybe to this leaf spring here, I don't know, with, um, with some string so that it doesn't put too much weight on this brake line here. All right, here we've got our brake caliper hanging down and you can kind of see how this works. Uh, this here and this, these two flat pieces, those are the uh, brake pads. Shoes are for uh, drum brakes. Anyway, these two pieces here are the brake pads, and this piston, it's this thing right here, this pushes in and it compresses these two pieces together, and those pinch on either side of this brake rotor here, like this, and they cause the wheel to slow down and stop turning. Look at that, came right off. That's your brake rotor. So what my dad was just saying there is that um, 
inside of these disc brakes, inside of the rotors, are actually a set of drum brakes. This, 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 the, um, this uh, half moon, this crescent shape, that is a brake pad, a very small brake pad. That's for the parking brake or emergency brake. And over here is identical here. And these two pieces push outwards this way and that one pushes that way on the other side. And they push against the inside of the brake rotor, which I'm gonna come down and show you. Here, those things push against the inside here and here uh, nice. for an emergency to stop that. It looks like these people never used their parking brake or never, certainly never used it to slow down their car. Uh, so these parking brake, uh, the, these emergency brake pads, they look fine to me. Ready. There's an adjustment on these. You can turn that little screw if they don't get tight enough to lock your brakes. But we'll find out. Cool. Well, the parts have arrived from Rock Auto. I chose to go with parts ordered online. Oh, because they wanted $160 for rear brake pads and two rotors from the auto parts store. But online, I found brake pads for front and back and the two rear rotors for $108, so I saved like 60 bucks. Uh, let's see what this box has. I've already pulled out one of the rotors. It was down below, but I've got Wagner ceramic brakes. I read that these are pretty good for this van. And inside of this package are mounting brackets, instructions, and brand new brake pads. Here's the other set. And down inside, some packing materials, shipping label, is one of my brand new rotors. Let's look at them compared to those old rusty rotors that we pulled off. Yeah, you can see how nice that brand new rotor looks and the, the vents for heat dispersal in there. Outside, this thing should fit right on. How sweet it is. Here's a good comparison of uh, the old versus the new. You can see, um, it's been a few days since these parts arrived. This bright orange rust is brand new on there. That should kind of rub right off. And you can see where the bright orange rust was versus this deeper red kind of ochre brown color here. This was the only part where the brake pad was touching and breaking. It should have a footprint that wide, but it was only doing that. And on the other side, you can see this somewhat shiny portion, only about that wide. That's the only brake that was allowing my vehicle to stop. It should have been that much. Those brakes should bite that whole portion there. I'm not going to touch them because I got rust on me, but very nice. Here's a little sneak preview of one finished side. For the rest of this tutorial, we'll be moving over to the other side of the van, the passenger side is disassembled the same way, it's just a mirror image of the driver's side. The caliper is hanging from a rope, and we're ready to remove the old brake pads. There's that one. Alright, I've zoomed in on the uh, brake caliper here, hanging by um, this rope. We've removed those brake shoes, or brake pads, excuse me. The next thing we want to do is remove this mounting hardware. They're, they're metal mounting brackets, and some of them have a spring action. It helps keep the brake pads mounted tightly within the caliper. And I'm going to use a screwdriver to pop those out. Pay close attention to which way these things mount um, when you take them out. So like, if you can see, we'll, we'll start with this one here on the bottom. Um, if I get underneath the metal here, you can see it starts to pop up, and there it's loose. Now pull that out in the orientation where it was in, and you can get an idea for how to put them back in there. 
you can see the difference between the old and the new. And it goes in just like that. Something else we want to do whenever we do a job like this is compare the old pieces with the new pieces. Make sure that they sent us the correct parts. Make sure that we ordered the correct parts. Perhaps the mistake is ours. And this piece is identical, so we can go ahead and put this in. Actually, not yet. I'm, I'm going to do some cleaning after I get all of these out. This one went in like that, and you can see our new one is exactly the same. We're going to compare these. Very good. Now to clean off all this brake dust, I have a wire brush. You would not want to use this on your teeth. <laughs> and it's going to kind of scrub. You see all that brake dust coming off of there? I'm going to blow off this caliper. There, look, more came off. You see that? So these pieces, if you can see that, they fit in there just like that. And these tabs in the front, these two little metal tabs here, one there, one there. Those will bend and shape to fit our brake caliper here. But I may have to use a screwdriver to get them to push down in. And that looks pretty good. That's ready to accept a brake pad. Again, this top one is just an inverse image of the bottom one. Okay. Now this middle one's a bit different. If you remember, it went, it went this way. And you can see on here, there is a little mounting tab there and there. And in here, there's one there and one there, those two. Slide it behind this cylinder here, which I'm pushing on with my thumb. We're going to have to make sure this cylinder is completely pushed in that way before we put on the brake shoes, but that'll be next. Or, excuse me, brake pads. I keep saying shoes. This seems to be in there. Pushed all the way down in the middle, and these tabs here will have some spring action. The first thing we're going to do is make sure that this cylinder right here that is hydraulic and it pushes against these brake pads to make the brake system work, we're going to make sure that it's all the way to the left. We're going to use this C-clamp and a metal plate. And what's the metal plate for, Dad? Uh, to not damage the cylinder. Right, the C-clamp. It's hollow in the middle. There, you can see the rubber boot is squishing in, uh, squishing in, and um, that, that you got a lot of movement on that time. It's starting to get pretty tight. Mm -mm. Now it is. Now this cylinder will stay, continue to be pushed down in there. It won't come back um, unless we push the brake pedal, right? Right. Then it comes back out. So uh, I'm going to put on some brake uh, pads, and we're going to see how this works out. These brake pads. You can see this portion here that's mounted onto this metal plate. This material, I, I purchased some ceramic brakes um, for this van. Um, ceramic is very good at resisting heat. It's also very tough material. Uh, the space shuttle had ceramic tiles on the bottom of it um, so that when it would re-enter the atmosphere, the friction of that atmosphere uh, at massive, massive velocity, pushing against and rubbing against the um, ceramic tiles, yeah, uh, it, it would um, last longer. Last right? longer. Um, so anyway, uh, there's other materials that are used for brake pads. Um, Semi-metallic brake pads are also very good, but they create a lot of brake dust. Uh, another good thing about ceramic pads is they don't create a lot of brake dust. But when you look in here, you can see these pads are uh, curved. We want to make sure, and you can imagine, the, um, the, the rotor spinning in between this, this caliper. Right now this caliper is this way, but it mounts on the wheel like that. Um, and here, if you get, actually, you get in a little more. 
There. Here, <laughs> thanks, Dad. Here, here is the um, uh, uh, rotor. So these brake pads push against that just like that. Put them on the wrong, turn it the wrong way, and they'll see. And you, you can see that work. Yeah, the, the the curve has to match the curve of the rotor. So these things go in here. You can see the curves are lined up just like that. I'm going to put in this front one first because these two spring surfaces, I have to push them back in order to get this front pad to go on. Oops, <laughs> let's put that on wrong. Yeah, when you're working with somebody else in a, uh, on a project like this, if you make a mistake, it's always a good idea to admit your flaw. Admit you've made a mistake, and then you can all learn from it and move on. There's no place for pride when you're working on a group project like this, when everybody's business is at stake. Own up to your mistake. Be honest about it. <sighs> Nothing to be embarrassed about. Everybody makes mistakes. <sighs> These are a bit of a, a wrestle to get them to fit in there. Um, in case you can't see it, these tabs on these brake pads, they go right in those uh, troughs or um, trenches made by the mounting hardware that we just put on. Let me double check and make sure that I've done this right. Remember when I said to compare these to the old brake pads? I'm going to do that. This brake pad that I pulled off, you can see it's all the way ground down to the metal backing plate. Here is the one we are replacing it with. Tabs are the same. Yep. Now, one minor difference, um, these metal tabs right there, it's really rusty, but it's kind of a square metal tab. That is supposed to be a wear indicator. Those metal tabs will make like a grinding or a squealing sound, and you'll know, oh, my brakes are low. This person kept driving this van <laughs> until there was nothing left. Did you see this? <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm comparing this. It does look correct, so I'm going to go back to trying to wrestle this pad. There we go. Um, okay, I'll, I'll try to show you what's going on. Um, those, those two spring um, shapes that were like this, that um, push in, when you push the brake pad onto them, they spring in and they hold it tight. Well, I was trying to push the pad on when those springs weren't all the way in, and it was just hitting the side of them, and it wasn't going in for me. So I had to, uh, I had to bend those springs back and actually, you can maybe see them in there. Right there and there. A little hard to see, but this pad is seated all the way firmly against the caliper. That front pad is in, or actually, it's front to us because it's facing that way. But this is actually the outside pad. When this caliper comes around and mounts on the rotor, this is the outside pad. Now we're going to put on the inside pad. Okay, so this one's going to be a little tight to get in there. I am going to put on some leather gloves for this. I don't want to pinch my fingers. Okay, let's try this again. You got a screwdriver down there if you need. I may. These are a pretty tight fit, and you, you like like I just showed. If you if you get one side, if you get say the bottom in all the way, the top won't want to go in. You need to put just in small increments the top and the bottom in evenly. If they're a really tight fit like that. Yeah, this is going to go. It's step by step. We're going to walk it in. You see it's getting closer and closer to that cylinder. That, that metal brake cylinder there, that's the, that's the bottomed out point. That's when these things are in all the way. Oh, you know what? It's just not... It was touching in the back, but not the front. There. This is all the way in. It was, uh, it was canted just a little bit this way. These pads are in. These pads are all the way in. So I figured something else out as I was putting on these brake pads. I, I moved the camera so you could see this better. This brake caliper 
there's these two pins here and here they're called guide pins and this brake caliper should slide you see that moved slide freely on those pins and this one is really sluggish so what I did was pull back these rubber boots here and here and I did this off camera just to make sure it was going to work. I was worried I might have to actually replace this whole caliper, but I think I can make this work. Um, I pulled back these boots and I sprayed in some WD-40 just to clean. WD-40 is not a very good lubricant, but it is a very good cleaner, and it's very good at dispersing water. And there, now you see that, that pulled all the way free. This little rubber boot has stayed behind, and that's going to let me clean up in there. We, we do not want to get any lubricant on these brake pads. This is new to me as well. This is something we're learning and discovering together here. You do not want to get any kind of lubricant, grease, oil, nothing on these brake pads or they will not work effectively. Okay. Um, th this is also something I should have realized is that the, the, uneven, whoop, the uneven wear on these things oh one of the pads was worn down to nothingness and the other pad still had a lot of uh, brake pad left on it. Uh, that's a sign that these could be sticking, although there were a lot of other problems with these brakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and lubricate this. So I'm spraying off these brake, these, these guide pins. I also sprayed some up in these holes here to free up and clean out some of that nasty old lubricant I'm using a little bit of electric parts cleaner because it doesn't leave a residue to blast off this nasty old grease. You can see it's coming a lot cleaner there. When I lubricate these with new grease, we need to use a silicone lubricant that is able to withstand extremely high temperatures. Brakes, because of all the friction involved in braking, they get very, very hot. Brakes get very hot. So we're gonna use uh, you can get it in little packets at auto parts stores. Um, it's silicone brake lubricant. Um, I have some high heat, uh, a large tube of, of high heat silicone lubricant here that I'm going to be using. And then I'll test fit after I've lubricated here. Um, another thing you can use, I've read, is um, Sil Glide. It's a very good multi purpose silicone lubricant. All right, now these should go together. All right, I'm gonna get my boots reattached up on these other parts so that it keeps out uh, dust and debris and crap. And if you can see these rubber boots, this part here pops up onto the metal of that part that was moving, of the, of the part that was sliding. And it's a little bit of a, of a, of a hassle getting these on but be, just be careful. Don't rip these rubber boots or else it will allow dust, debris, and junk to get in and uh, hamper the effectiveness and eventually cause these brake slides to, to seize up. There, that slides very freely. Very good, you see that? And those boots are staying on as I slide this. Very good, very good. I'm gonna wipe off some extra uh, grease and things, uh, some extra WD-40 that has found its way on because we don't want to get any lubricant of any kind on those brake pads. There was some uh, WD-40 overspray here on these, uh, this mounting hardware and um, a lot of grease, uh, you know, just like butter or oil when you're cooking, uh, it'll heat up and it'll get runnier. And that, uh, that's the reason why you have to use a high heat grease, is that when it heats up from the heat of breaking, that friction creates heat. That grease could heat up and turn liquid and run into your brake pads, and all of a sudden you're sliding down the road with no braking ability because a bunch of grease and lubricant has ruined your brake pads. Now we're gonna put on the rotor. I'm gonna pull the camera back a bit so you can see what's going on. New rotor, looking good. 
put a couple of uh, lug nuts on here. Uh, I'm going to put them on backwards so this surface just holds the rotor in place while I'm working so it won't try to uh, come back off and crush my toes or something. Push that bottom in a little. There you are. There we go. Yeah, because remember you took off those factory retainer clips? Right. So now this, this is the fix for that when you're assembling. Working on... Uh, Cars, motorcycles, bicycles, appliances in your kitchen, whatever you're working on. Sometimes things will be a lot easier than you expected. And sometimes it'll be a lot more difficult than you expected. So, after taking the van on a little drive, I noticed a few things. There was a, a smell, a hot um, sort of burning smell that I recognized as the smell of brake pads, um, you know, heavily engaged. Um, there was um, a, uh, a lot of heat that I felt after I stopped the van and I, I kind of gently put my hand, not touching it, but feeling around the rotors and I could tell they were hot, very hot. Uh, and finally, when you put an automatic transmission vehicle in drive, um, it should creep forward when you let off the brake and uh, before you even touch the gas pedal, and the van would not creep forward. So, even though I lubricated the uh, caliper pins on these old calipers on the back of this vehicle, uh, they locked up on me again, and the van was lightly braking all the time. Um, which is not good. You'll generate a lot of excess heat, you'll wear down your pads, and those brakes could lock up and refuse to release. So, I've purchased brand new calipers here. I'll bring the camera around, you can get a better look at them. And uh, these brand new calipers, um, they were not terribly expensive, um, a little cheaper than I thought they would be. Um, these old calipers here, I will be returning, and uh, auto parts stores get you a small amount of money back when you return a part that they can in turn sell and have that part rebuilt. It's called a core charge. Um, stuff like starters, batteries, and brake calipers. Um, these new brake calipers here, you can see I've got the new um, rotor on there. Everything looks very shiny and fresh. Um, my brake pads that I purchased and the mounting hardware and stuff, that was able to go in here no problem. I didn't hurt anything by taking it on that short drive, but uh, I'm glad that I did go on a little drive to test things out. And uh, as you can see, everything looks nice and new and shiny. Um, so what I'm going to do now is show you a short supplement video. How to swap this flexible brake line here. This part's metal, there's a rubber line going up from the old caliper onto the new caliper. So this is an 11 millimeter, I believe. Yes, 11 millimeter uh, socket. It's gonna go on this bolt right here. Woohoo! Now when I take this off, fluid's going to start to drip. There it goes. So we're gonna try to do this quickly. Again, don't let this um, brake fluid get in your pads. I'm gonna get that bolt off of there. Um, there's a copper crush washer that acts as a seal, and that washer is not reusable because it's been crushed and deformed out of shape. So the, the, the new calipers came with new crush washers, but we have to hold that washer and take this old bolt out of here. There's one copper crush washer on each side of this uh, banjo bolt mount here. These, these bolts actually let fluid pass through them. There's a hole in the bolt you can see when I get this apart. Okay, there. And you can see there was a gasket on, um, on this side as well. Here is the new uh, bolt and two crush washers that came with the caliper. You can see that hole in the bolt. Hydraulic uh, brake fluid passes through there. So this goes on one side, crush washer on the other side, and it will screw right into the new caliper. Give this a good tighten, and you'll actually, you'll feel those washers kind of deform and crush 
as you do this, which is a good thing. That's what you're supposed to do. And this is going to keep dripping until I get this tightened on. You'll see my caliper is shaking a bit because I don't have the caliper bolts fully attached here. All right, so now I want to watch this. Over the course of me finishing this job, I'm going to watch this for leaks. We don't want any leaks. And we can untie this rope and get rid of this old caliper here. I might be able to get it tied. We may need this rope again, who knows. <laughs> okay, out with the old. This is going to be returned for my uh, core charge swap. Put the leaky hole up and it won't leak anymore. To retighten these calipers, whether you're putting old ones on or new, they need to be torqued down to a particular torque uh, amount. On this van, it's 148 pounds, which is a lot. Before you put the final torque on anything that has multiple bolts like this, Get both of them, one at a time, snug, switch to the next one, snug, back and forth, back and forth. Um, that way you don't torque down one bolt with the other being loose, causing the entire um, apparatus you're bolting down to become um, crooked, whopper job. I have my torque wrench set, except for the person weed eating their yard next door, you're going to hear a click. There, 148 pounds. Unfortunately, I cannot get to the top one with the torque wrench. You remember how difficult that was? So I'm going to use this wrench here and just give it a really, really good tighten. <laughs> 